I'm going to read a few verses from the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in the New Testament. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. By which ye also are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Now this is what Paul is going to preach. This is, his, this is the crux of his message. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and then he was seen of cephas that is peter the apostle and then of the twelve and after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some have fallen asleep. That's a word that the Bible uses for a believer who dies in Christ. It's not that their soul sleeps. Their soul is conscious in eternity. But the body's laid into the ground awaiting a resurrection day in which it will be raised and reunited with the soul. But I want to concentrate on those words that I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And Paul says that if you receive that message, you come into the good of the forgiveness of sins. He says, by which you are saved if you've believed what was preached unto you. So friend, here's what we have to preach today. We don't have a message, our friend, of uncertainty, but we're preaching a message of 100% certainty that you can know your sins forgiven, you can know peace with God, and you can have a home in heaven. You can receive this today at the corner of Young and Dundas without signing a paper, without joining a church, without being baptized, although a true believer will be baptized, but you can receive the forgiveness of sins, you can be saved. Your soul can be saved right here, friend, if you believe the message that we're preaching. It's the message that Paul preached. It's the same message that the Lord Jesus gave when he was here. So what's the message? Well, I want to think of three very simple points. Very simple. I want to think, first of all, how that the death of Christ was voluntary. It was voluntary. Yes, he was brought to the cross. Yes, he was impaled upon the cross. Yes, his back was whipped, and it, revealed, it, it looked like a plowed field. Yes, all those things happened. Yes, the authorities arrested him. But dear friend, when Christ died, it was a voluntary death. His death was voluntary. The second thing I want to think about, the second point I want to make is this. His death was vicarious. In other words, his death was on behalf of others. He wasn't dying as a martyr. He wasn't dying, friend, without purpose. There's a reason Christ died, and it was on behalf of others. And the third point I want to make at the corner today is that his death was victorious. For God raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. Today there's a living Savior at the right hand of God. And if you come to him today, friend, not only will you receive forgiveness of sins, but you'll receive a new heart and power to live a life that pleases God. His death was victorious. And it can be victorious to you, friend, if you'll trust him. So I want to think of those three thoughts. First, the death of Christ... It was voluntary. Second, the death of Christ, it was vicarious. It was on behalf of others. And third, the death of Christ was victorious. I'm going to touch on those three things. But here we have...
have a man, Paul, who says to, to the people in Corinth, he says, I preach, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news, that's what the, the word gospel means. It means good news. You know, friends, somebody here at the corner just said about 15 minutes, you're telling people how to live. That's not what we're here for, friends. If, we, if you could just turn over a new leaf and all of a sudden be right with God because you've changed this and you've stopped smoking and you've done all these things, if that's what brought you to heaven, friend, the death of Christ would be worth nothing. Paul the Apostle says, for if righteousness is come by the law, then Christ died in vain. He died for nothing. But my friend, can I tell you that you cannot do a single thing to please God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 7 says this, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, you wonder to yourself, why? I thought if you were a good neighbor, I thought if you were a, a good, decent person, if you don't murder anybody, if you don't commit crimes, heinous crimes, well, then you're definitely going to heaven. Friend, the problem is we've sinned against God. God tells us in his word that there's not a just person upon the earth that does good and sins not. God tells us in the same, in the book before the one that I read, the book of Romans, chapter 1, he tells us there are people that live in immorality. In chapter 2, he says there's people that look down their nose at those people that are living in sin, and they say, hey, at least I'm not as bad as that person. And then in chapter 3, he says there's the religious person, the practicing Jew that was given God's commandments. And God sums it up. Listen to what God says. After giving us, God gives us basically his judgment of the human race. And God says, whether it's the immoral person who worships the statue and lives in immorality, or whether it's the good living person, or whether it's the religious man, God says there's no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So friend, all of us are guilty, all of us must give account to God, and not one of us can come into the presence of God in our sins. Jesus said, if you die in your sins, whither I go, you cannot come. Jesus went to heaven. We read that verse. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. You see, those words, the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ, they were all predicted 750 years before he came into the world. That's why Paul says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It's because it was predicted. And 750 years later, it took place. Over 330 prophecies of Christ, where he would live, where he would be born, his public ministry, his death, all the details of what took place around the cross. Over 330 references, they were all predicted hundreds of years before he came. Friend, only God could know that. So we confidently stand at the corner today, and we tell you that in our hands is the living book of the living God. And God loves you. But you have a problem, same as me, you have sin. And even one sin will keep you barred from God's presence forever. But friend, the gospel means good news. And the good news is this, that Jesus Christ, our Lord, he came into the world to save sinners. He lived for 33 years. He spoke everything that was in the mind and will of God. Everything he did when he gave sight to the blind, when he raised the dead, when he healed the sick, when he cleansed the leper, all the things Christ did, friend. It was all because of his love to humanity. So let me touch on that first point. The death of Christ and the burial and the resurrection, it was voluntary. We already heard from my brother Liam this morning. Jesus himself said, No man taketh my life from me. I have the power to lay it down, 
I have the power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. You see, friend, if you were to take even a casual reading of the New Testament of the Bible, you'll see this. There were many times that the authorities sought to arrest Jesus and to put him to death, but they could not until it was God's appointed time. There even came a moment when the guards came back and they were asked by the authorities, why have you not apprehended him? Listen to what he said. They said, never man spake like this man. You see, friend, Jesus is unique. What year is it today? It's 2021 AD, Anno Domini. That means in the year of our Lord. So anytime you sign a document, anytime you put your initials beside the date, friend, take note of this. It is in the year of our Lord. He is the central figure of humanity and of all history. He is the central figure of eternity, friend. What you do with Christ determines where your soul will be for all eternity. And the chart I have beside me, friend, you'll notice John chapter 10 and verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door by me. If anyone enters in, he shall be saved. So friend, if you trust Christ, you'll be saved. If you pass by and you neglect them and you die in your sins, you'll be in hell, friend. Why? Not because God is angry at you. Not because God, my friend, delights in punishment. He doesn't. Listen to what God says in the Bible. God says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked might turn and live. So can I tell you, friend, when Jesus died, his death was voluntary. Second thing. When Jesus died, his death was vicarious. It was on behalf of others. You know, friend, you and I have a problem called sin. Sin will keep us out of heaven. But Jesus died for sinners, friend. Listen to what the verse says. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and on the third day rose again according to the scriptures. Can I tell you, friend, with this Bible in my hand, Christ died that you might be saved. Would you trust him? The third thing I want to think about, the death of Christ, friend, is victorious. For we read those words that on the third day, he rose again, friend. That's why we sing that song. Hallelujah, Christ arose. And friend, you can know your sins forgiven, not based on rivers of tears you've cried, not based on you, my friend, feeling sorry for your sin, but my friend, you need to acknowledge your sin. You need to acknowledge your sin is causing you to perish. And you need to admit to God, I, I've sinned against God. That's repentance, friend. It's when you agree with God about your sin and about his holiness, and about your need of salvation. But rivers of tears, friend, would never take away sin. But can I tell you who did? The one who died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died for you, friend. Would you trust him today when he rose from the dead? That's God's evidence that God is satisfied with the death of his son. And if you're willing to be satisfied, with the work that God is satisfied with, you'll be saved. Listen to what Paul says in Acts chapter, in Acts, in the book of the Acts chapter 16 and verse 31, the apostle Paul is asked, what must I do to be saved? Listen to his answer, friend. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Last point, friend. The death of Christ is victorious. You and I are going to die. The wages of sin is death. But there is one friend who broke the power of Satan. And he rose from the dead, defeating death. And friend, today you can have eternal life because Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Would you trust him, friend? Trust him today. You say... I'll wait until I'm older. I still, I'm still young. I've got plenty of time. 
Can I tell you what the Bible says, friend? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Friend, there's no answer to that. If you die in your sins, friend, it's hell and the lake of fire. Trust Christ today and be saved. Listen to the verse again, friend. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Put your trust in him and your sins which are many will all be forgiven. Trust Christ, friend, and be saved.